Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We're going to be continuing with our starting from scratch application in this video by creating the basic infrastructure for our application. You could sort of think of this as the skeleton, if you will. Now, there are a couple of things we want to accomplish. Number one, we want to get the main function defined. The main function will be our entry point into the application. And then we want to go ahead and get our application delegate class set up. So there's three different files that we will be creating. And as a quick reminder, I'm not going to be going into much detail as I put this together for the simple fact that the starting from scratch series was really a way for you to jump in, have a little bit of fun, and put something together quickly without listening to tons and tons of theory. That stuff we'll have coming up in the future. All right, with that, let's get started. First thing I'm going to do, come over here to other sources. And this is where I will be creating the main implementation file and putting our main function. This is just keeping pace with how the regular iPhone application templates set things up. So by setting things up similar here, when you start working with those templates, you're going to feel right at home. So let's start out by right-clicking, coming over here to Add. Now let's just come over to New File. Now, of course, there are files that I can add in that will set up both the header and the implementation file for me and do an import of like foundation, etc. I don't want to do that. I want to keep everything from scratch. So once again, from other, we're going to make sure that we select, in this case, an empty file, where a few minutes ago we did empty project. So empty file, let's go ahead and hit next and give this guy a name. This will be main.m. Let's go ahead and hit finish. So there we are with main. Let's go ahead and come down here. And the first thing I want to do is import our UI kit. So UI kit, and we'll go ahead and close that off. This is very important because this is going to give us access to the UI application main function. And that function is responsible for instantiating our UI application object and our application delegate object, basically getting everything kicked off as well as setting up things like the event loop, etc., etc. Those are things we're going to look at in greater detail in the future when we start getting into a lot of the theory lessons. But for now, let's keep this light. Now, we know that we need a main function. So for those of you that are C and C++ programmers, this is going to look quite familiar. It's going to put int main, and main is going to take in a couple of arguments. We've got int arg if I can spell that right, argc, and let's go ahead and do a char pointer for argv, and let's go ahead and close that off. Now I'm going to go and skeleton this in, open and close, and there you go. Now, let's go ahead and set up an NS auto release pool, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and hit command s to save this file so that the NS auto release pool will be picked up. Otherwise, it's not going to know what I'm typing out until I save it. This just makes life easier for me. I'm being lazy. So NS auto, and there it is. And it's going to be a pointer, and we'll call it pool once again, just kind of following along with the way Apple does things in their templates. And then with this guy, let's go ahead and create one and get it initialized. So we're going to be initializing um, an object of NS auto release pool. And let's go ahead and alloc. And then let's simply initialize it. There you go. So now we have an auto release pool. Uh, if you're not familiar with NS auto release pools, definitely something cool to read about and to see how they work. Again, we're not going to go into the great details here. Uh, from there, we need to make sure that we simply come in here and release the pool. So we've got our pool, and we're going to issue a release message to it. And then at the very end, we need to return something back, and we're going to be returning the result that comes back from UI application main in a second. But I want to go ahead and just get uh, a return in place just so that we um, uh, basically have a, a simple setup going on here that's kind of intact. All right, now let's go ahead and get this call for UI application main setup. So I'm going to set up an integer that's going to integer variable return value equals. And now I'm going to do a function call that will, again, return an integer. But before I begin typing it, let's go ahead and maximize our window here because in a second you're going to see this thing explode with different arguments that we can set up. So coming in with UI application. 
and this is UI application main. Once again, it is a function that is set up inside of UI kit, and since we've imported UI kit, it is now available to us. And you'll notice that, in fact, let me go ahead and just come over here and pull this guy back. Look at this. UI application main takes in several things. As a matter of fact, it takes in four. Just a very quick description as I am putting them in. First thing is we are simply going to pass on the parameters that came in when the application was first launched. So we'll simply pass in uh, argc. We'll come over here and do argv. Now we've got two final things. They're both of type ns strings. And if you look, one is the principal class and the other one is the delegate class. The principal class should always be nil. Again, I'm not going into lots of theory, but just real quickly, by setting this to nil, UI application main will instantiate the UI application class. It's going to be using a singleton design pattern, so we're only going to have one UI application. If we want it to, for whatever reason, extend UI application into a further defined class or one with more functionality that we want, custom functionality, we could specify that class name through an NS string object right here. We don't want to do that. Apple recommends against doing that. It's through their design, uh, excuse me, delegation patterns. They would prefer you to set up an app delegate and to let the UI application object send off calls to the delegate that has been designated, which we'll be setting up here in just a minute. So this should almost always be nil. But you can, if you won't, extend UI application. So next thing I want to do is jump over here to the delegate class. Now, if the delegate class name is nil, this is more or less telling UI application main, okay, here's the deal. We have a nib file. If you take a look inside of our info.property list, you're going to find the nib file that we basically need to start up with. And inside that nib file, you're going to find an application delegate object that has been freeze dried, if you will. Basically, all of the objects have been serialized. And then once that nib file is, is opened up, those objects are put back into memory. And you're going to have classes back here that's going to be associated with those objects. So you're going to find your delegate classes already back over here. And there's going to be linkage that will occur uh, between the, uh, the object that's just been dumped from the nib file back into memory and the classes that we have over here. But we're not going to let all that stuff take place automatically because we can't. We don't have a nib file. If you recalled in the last video, we took care of removing that ourselves. I will have some other starting from scratch videos coming up in the very near future, another series that's going to focus on putting this project together with the use of nib files so that you can see creating your own nib files uh, from scratch and then putting the objects in those and getting everything linked up. But that's for another time. So instead of nil, we need to specify our own uh, application uh, delegate object here. So what I'm going to call this guy, and again, it's an NS string object, so I'm just going to use an NS literal here, NS string literal. We're just going to call this guy my app delegate. There we go. My spelling, by the way, gets worse and worse as the hour wears on, and right now it's about 2.15 in the morning. So with that set up, let's go ahead and just end this off, and our value coming back is being held in retval. Let's go ahead and just put that down here. So retval. There you go. So our returned value. Now the idea of this, uh, this line right here has the UI application main function firing off and starting everything up. We get our UI application, we get our event loop in place, we get the linkage between our delegate class, our app delegate class that is, and our UI application. And then at that point, over inside of the application delegate, that's where you can begin writing your own code. So things just kind of hold here until your program comes to an end, and then the pool's released, and we return back whatever value is returned from UI application main. So with that in place, I'm just going to hit Command S, and with main now behind us, all that's left is to go ahead and set up our My App Delegate class. So this is going to involve the creation of both a header file as well as an implementation file. So let's just jump up here to classes real quick. We'll go ahead and right click, come over here to add new file. Once again, let's keep this as simple as we can. Empty file, jump to next. Again, the name needs to match here. So my app 
delegate dot h. This is our header file. Let's go ahead and hit finish. Let's go ahead and add in one more. So add another new file, and this one is going to be again another empty file. And again, my app delegate.m, meaning our implementation file. So let's go ahead and hit finish. So let's go ahead and get these guys at least a framework set up and in place. So let's jump up here to my app delegate. So inside the header, the very first thing I want to do is import once again our UI kit. So we'll go ahead and bring that guy in. Next thing I want to do is set up our interface portion of our class and I'm just going to use the template for that so I'll just start out by typing at I and there you go interface so I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter so the class name is my app delegate and we are inheriting from NS object now we can just jump down to IVARs and start declaring any instance variables and we can jump down to methods and start declaring those but we got to do something a little special here. We need to implement a protocol to complete the linkage that's going to be taking place between UI application and our application delegate class here. And to implement this protocol, we'll just simply add it right after NS object. And the protocol is UI app location and delegate. So there you go. So by implementing that now gives us access to a bunch of optional methods that we can define over on the implementation side of this class. And we will be defining one of them before the end of this video, and that is the application did finish launching method. And that is where we can begin writing our code because that gets called by our UI application object. Once everything's done, the application's running and everybody's happy. So at this point, let's just jump down here to IVARS, drop in a comment real quick, and let's simply say IVARS. <laughs> Meaning that's where we're going to put them down here. Let's go ahead and drop a couple of comments. One, properties, because I will be creating some properties. And the other one, let's go ahead and do methods. All right, I'm going to double check my spelling because once again, it's late. I wouldn't be surprised if I've already misspelled a few things. But hey, that's how it goes. Now, I would like to point out real quick that in the next video, when we begin creating things like a window and then shortly afterwards a view and a label, uh, please keep in mind that the approach I am taking here at the beginning is strictly for educational purposes. I will begin by uh, actually creating that variable as a local variable inside the application did finish launching method that we'll be uh, defining here in just a minute. But as we progress further and further into this project, I will be taking um, a lot of these guys and taking them out as local variables and putting them over as instanced variables inside the My App Delegate interface section here. So just keep that in mind. That's why I've got properties defined down here or not defined, but commented in. So let's go ahead and save this. Now what I'd like to do is jump over here to the implementation file for the My App Delegate class. And first thing we need to do is to import, and we need, oops, not that. We need to make sure we import our My App Delegate header. Okay, so with that in place, now let's go ahead and get the implementation portion of our class in place. So again, we're gonna be relying on our templates. There we are implementation. Let's just go ahead and hit enter real quick. Jumps us over to class. The name of the class is my app delegate. And then from there, we're done. Pretty simple. So let's just throw some comments in real quick. I'm going to put a comment under here. Synthesize properties. And then let's jump down here to method. And this is where we will define our methods. And we'll just come back and put code up under those here in just a few minutes. Actually, how about we do that right now with our first one. Let's go ahead and implement one of the appl application delicate methods. Let's do the um, application did finish launching that we was talking about. So we'll go ahead and put a dash in here. This indicating that it's going to be an instanced, uh, uh, instanced method and it returns nothing. So we'll put void and application did finish launching like such. Now it does take in a single parameter. So let's go ahead and put the colon in place and it is of type UI application. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to bounce this off just to make it look a little nice. So UI 
application. And it's going to be a pointer so that we can have a reference to the actual UI application inside this guy. So application is what it's going to be called. Let's go ahead and put opening and closing braces in place. And so with that, our code goes here. So this is where we will begin putting our code to create a window, create a view, and do stuff like that. Again, for those of you that are following along and you do have knowledge of iPhone programming and you may think that this is a bit unorthodox or you may be thinking about, uh, you know, it, very shortly here I'm going to be creating a view but not a view controller and you may be wondering why. Again, baby steps. We're, we're building up. Uh, this application from scratch in a way that I'm hoping will prove to be educational to those out there that are new to working with iPhone app development. So that's pretty much everything that I wanted to get in place. As long as I haven't made any horrible spelling mistakes, I should be able to come in here and do a command S and a command B to build. And look at that. It built it successfully. That also means I should be able to launch this application right now in the simulator. And if all goes well, it's going to come up. It won't have any problems. We don't have a window. We don't have a view. We don't have any control. So it's just going to be black, but let's try it out. So I'm just going to come up here, build and go, and see what we get. So there we go. Up. Look at that. Emptiness. Just emptiness. But starting from scratch has indeed launched. So we've accomplished and, and it's still running. So that's what we want it to do. Let's go ahead and just jump out of that. So there she is. She's, she's now on the simulator. Fantastic. Jump back over here to the code. So with that, we now have a very simple framework set up for our application. In the next video, what we're going to do is take a look at creating a window. So that is going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.